I'm Rob May, I'm Director of Planning and Economic Development at the City of Brockton. And I want to thank you all for coming out tonight as we get ready to envision the future of the Campello neighborhood. Um, I want to acknowledge um, our elected officials. Because <laughs> he's looking for his pen, what are you looking for? <laughs> I'm no? trying to get the name tag to stay. Oh, trying to get the name tag. Oh, my gosh. Um, so, Council D'Agostino from the third ward. Um, I got a text a couple minutes ago from Susan Castro from the fourth ward. She cannot be here this evening. She's still recovering from knee surgery. Um, I think she's going to be bionic woman now, so it'll be interesting to see how this all, all works out. Um, and then several counselors at large wanted to be here, but there is an ordinance committee scheduled at the same time. I think this is going to be much more fun than the ordinance committee, because at least we have pizza. Um, and I want to thank uh, the Zulis family and the Cape Cod Cafe for um, making the uh, pizza available. We really appreciate your generosity. And um, what, what, what? The mayor welcomes you. Hi, boss. I know you're watching. Um, Nancy um, is with, um, oh gosh, I forgot the name. Studio Louvre. Studio Louvre. <laughs> and um, she is one of, part of the consulting team that's going to be helping us through this. Um, and you'll also see as we go through the presentation that there is a rather large uh, advisory group that includes public officials, elected officials, uh, property owners, residents, some key institutions in the community, and they're helping us guide this process, but it's tonight and these next couple of meetings, and I hope my shirt's open, um, that we're coming out to you. We really want to hear what you all have to say. Um, I live on Oak Street, North Side. This is your neighborhood. We want to hear from you all. Uh, so it's important that uh, you participate. You tell your friends, families, and relatives. You all come next time. And uh, we'll have fresher cookies next time. So. Well, I mean, they're fresh now, but by next week, we've got two weeks. Ago. Could we get homemade cookies? Sure. Come on. John, don't make cookies. We'll work on it. Um, so with that, Nancy, I will hand this over to you, and you can introduce the rest of the team. And we're off and running. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Rob. Let's give a hand for Rob, who represented Brockton really well published this week. Uh, thank you so much everyone for coming tonight. It's going to be a very fun uh, community engagement workshop that we're hosting tonight. Uh, in terms of today's workshop, there's a series of four. This is the first one that really looks at what is existing in the Compello neighborhood and also what we would like to see in the Compello in terms of understanding what we want the future of the Compello neighborhood to look like. So what does the future of Compello look like? In terms of today, we're going to have about a 15 minute introduction in terms of setting up the groundwork for you to have some understanding of, um, of the current kind of zoning conditions and what has brought urban development patterns in the Compello neighborhood. And then we're going to then go into two activities, one which I call personal voice, which is literally um, soliciting feedback individually from you in terms of what you would like to see change or enhance. And then the second part is a really fun collaborative exercise that looks at design activities where you become the architect, you become the urban designer of your district. And that's again to try to create community building and some kind of consensus of what you want the Compella neighborhood to look like. In terms of, um, as Rob mentioned, we have been meeting with the steering committee, the Compello partnership, and they're all listed here. We want to um, thank their volunteer work, it, you know, their representatives, uh, nonprofits, profits, counselors, everyone, residents, business owners, everyone kind of guiding us in terms of what these workshops should be. And then in terms of uh, our partners, we have Rob, Evan, and um, May as well, right? Your first name is John May, right? John I mean, Faye. Faye, John Fay. I'm sorry that your name is not here, but John has been also very important participant in the process. And then we have um, this. This is being um, funded by Massachusetts Housing Partnership, 
and then in terms of our team, you met Joshua, Joshua right here. So say Joshua is from Studio Loose Architects and Joshua is gonna facilitate and assist you if you need some help with markers, notes, and then Sophie as well is a facilitator and she's from Studio Lose Architects, part of the team. And then with us, working with us in terms of design team is Ines Associate, em Emily is not here, um, but she, you will see her in the future kind of workshops. And with us in terms of partnership is also Eric Haverson from RKG Associates and he's going to also present the data that he collected of the community. Um, so again, the mission is what does the future look like so we can begin to incorporate into the neighborhood plan and also allow us to provide kind of strategies for the rezoning of the area and also to update the zoning to what exists because it's, we already know it's a little bit outdated. In terms of um, the, the, the district, the Capella neighborhood that we're looking at, it's right here and just to let you know in terms of the state of Massachusetts, Brockton Compello neighborhood is classified as an environmental justice population. And what that really means is that a majority of this district um, has 20, at least 25% of foreign born. So it's important to know the demographics that is in this area. And then in terms of the green area to the southern portion, you that community has um, English as a second language. So this is important information to know. And then to the, the east side, you have also um, income to consider. So the income meaning that 65% um, of that demographic is at the medium Massachusetts household income or less. So why is this important? It's important that when we develop the district, we might think about affordability, right? Like this 25% of your demographics um, hits the medium household income, uh, might be foreign born, like how do you begin to also um, work with that demographic population and as, and as well kind of the, the trends of changes that we're seeing in Brockton in terms of higher income. So this is just in terms of framework for, um, for you to understand in terms of the area. In terms of the um, assets that you have along Main Street, in the southern Main Street, you have beautiful open space that I would say is currently underutilized. So how do we begin to activate the South River Plain River, which right now is existing as an asset, but it's not necessarily um, kind of expanded upon? Or how do we begin to work with Keith Park currently in terms of programming to bring activity, family-centered um, uh, activity in the area? And then again, how do we tackle the lots at the MBTA that you know, what is the best kind of usage um, in terms of activities that supports this kind of vacancy, you know, that sometimes you see um, when, you know, when it's not high use of, um, of transit kind of um, uh, scheduling. So in terms of, you know, uh, the, the Main Street area, which is mainly our focus, you, um, in 1880, this is a map of 1880 of the neighborhood. And what you see historically is a lot of mill buildings. And so we today see some resonance of that through our historic buildings. But what happens is when in 1880, when you have these mill buildings, they took large land. And today what you see is kind of a fragmentation of almost infill throughout time of different uses that is now populating Main Street. We have some beautiful historic buildings um, you know, Compella does have a local historic district, but many historic buildings are not protected. So what we're currently doing is how do we also enhance protection of our historic assets? You know, so that's what we're going to undergo. In terms of um, the land use, what's interesting here in terms of the area is that you have, you know, a really interesting transition in the northern portion. You have municipal religious uses. And then as we get to the central middle area, you have a lot of kind of mixed use. And then in the southern portion where you have more open area, you have more residential use. And on the west side, you have your low density residential. And on your east side, you have more of industrial manufacturing, um, automobile kind of usage. So you can begin to see that the Compella neighborhood is 
almost fragmented into three sectors, right? So you have the residential, you have the main street, and then you have the industrial. And our goal is to try to activate that main street to be to be a seam of the neighborhood so that it's cons cons consistently activated along the corridor and through the residential to the industrial zone A. This is where I leave it to Eric. Eric. Hi everyone, I'm Eric Alverson from RKG Associates, part of the consultant team. I just wanted to take a few minutes to share with you just a little bit of the information that we've collected on the neighborhood demographics. Um, we're hoping that that information will just help you set the stage for the conversation that you all will have at your table around what you'd like to see in the neighborhood. But we thought it might be good for you to potentially think about some of the demographics and the changes that the neighborhood is going through or sort of who lives here today versus who was here five or ten years ago as you start to think about the future of the neighborhood. So one of the interesting things um, that we found, and you all who might live here may already know this, but Campello is a growing neighborhood and Brockton is a growing city. But the growth in Campello just from a percentage basis is actually growing faster than the city as a whole. And it's also demographically growing a little bit different than the rest of the city too. You could see, um, if you're too far away, hopefully you can still see, but uh, the graphic on the left-hand side of the screen shows population change by age over the last five years. The purple bars are Campello, the green is the city as a whole. And you can see in the age groups, um, residents under the age of 18, so children under the age of 18, are growing substantially more in Campello as a share of the population than the city as a whole, almost by a thousand new residents over the last five years. So that's pretty significant. We see also that um, residents between the ages of 25 and 44. So if we think about kids growing, residents 25 to 44 are also growing in Campello and the city as a whole. So we might start to think about, well, those two probably go together in family formation. And then we also see a lot of um, older adults, 65 plus, who are actually aging in place. We saw over the last five years, the 55 to 64 drop a lot in the neighborhood. The 65 plus come up a lot in the neighborhood which tends to indicate to us that those folks are staying in place, staying in their homes, aging in place in the neighborhood. So as we think about what, what folks might need from a housing perspective, or maybe a, a retail or commercial perspective, knowing the ages and who might be served best by what happens along Main Street, we think is important. As I mentioned before, um, the graphic on the right just shows household composition by family and also what we call non-family. So family are two or more individuals that are related by blood or marriage. Non-family could be um, households living alone or it could be like a roommate situation, for example. Um, what's growing most in the Campello neighborhood are those family households which match back to the demographics that we talked about before by age. So younger folks and then those who might be in their middle ages with children. Um, we also know, and I think Hansi mentioned this before, household incomes are also growing not only in the city, but really in the Campello neighborhood itself. With most of that household income growth focused um, and concentrated around households that are earning $100,000 or more in annual income, um, which is a pretty big change from about five years ago. And you can see those purple bars going up uh, much higher as we approach the right-hand side of the graph, which is where the higher income households are. From our perspective, um, that could indicate more household spending to support local businesses. So as we think about what might go on Main Street, putting those folks within close walking or biking or even driving distance to Main Street and those businesses could be something that we want to think about. We also looked at the change in um, household composition by those who are owners and those who are renters. It's pretty interesting, five years ago, um, there were uh, quite a bit more renters than there were owners. Shift ahead five years later, the um, Campello neighborhood actually has gained a lot more owners than renters. And in, for the neighborhood as a whole, it's almost at a 50-50 split right now, whereas before it was about a 60-40 split. Um, in the news articles that I've been reading over the last couple years about Brockton, it seems to be a place where owner households are coming to. There's been more owner households in the city as a whole. It's almost the, what we call the drive to qualify sometimes in terms of housing affordability. A lot of folks are coming to Brockton because it's actually a place where people can afford to buy and to rent homes. Um, and that's sort of evidenced by the breakdown of different types of units uh, in the Campello neighborhood. 
there were actually fewer sort of single family and two family and three family house, housing units in Campello. Um, but as we fast forward five years, some of those have come back, some of those have been converted over to ownership units, and sort of, we're sort of seeing that trend toward ownership in the neighborhood. So as we think about housing and what might support the folks who want to live here or who are living here today from a housing perspective, we think that those are important things to consider. Um, and then lastly, around what Hensi was talking about before around housing affordability. We know in Massachusetts there's a pretty major housing crisis. We hear about it almost on a daily basis. Um, and in Brockton, there, that's no different. Housing prices continue to go up, whether you're a renter or you're an owner. Um, housing prices in the Campello neighborhood and in Brockton as a whole, in terms of the value of those homes, has skyrocketed just like it has across the rest of Massachusetts. So as we think about who's living here today, who might live here in the future, and what kinds of housing they need, just thinking about housing affordability, we see the same thing on renter households. Um, that's really important. Um, so as you're thinking about your diagrams and what might happen in the neighborhood, thinking about housing affordability, uh, I think should be an important consideration. Um, so what we also looked at in, in addition to the demographic data and information about who's living here, uh, we also looked at the land uses, as Hansi was showing that land use map before, the land use composition um, of parcels in the, uh, in the corridor. So right now about 44% of all the parcels um, have commercial uses and actually have a dedicated automotive use. If you've been in the corridor, there are a lot of auto repair shops, auto sales shops, those kinds of things. Um, so something to think about, you know, is this a place where those are going to be located long term? Um, are there opportunities for them to go elsewhere? Are there opportunities to enhance those properties? Maybe think about something different for those. So there's a good mix. There's a lot of automotive retail. There's also uh, re regular retail, so um, shops, uh, restaurants, um, corner stores. There's also uh, manufacturing processing and also warehouse and distribution here. So there are those industrial uses that tend to be kind of across the tracks on the um, east side of the neighborhood as well. So as we think about those areas, do those stay, do those transition over time? What's the desires of the neighborhood? Thank you, Eric. Thanks. <laughs> so in terms of something to um, consider, that's why we have here design your own block. Um, what we notice in terms of your existing infrastructure is that you have, a, when you have a lot of these kind of automobile um, uses, they tend to have very large um, like driveways. And, um, and what we noticed here is that that actually really affects the pedestrian life of the street. And at some cases you have crosswalks that are not even accessible and so something to think about is what do you want your public realm to be what do you want in terms of your continuity of the neighborhood district to be um, and then here you can begin to see that there's a lack of canopy trees you know so trees are really important as well to ensure that you are protected during the hot summer and that it allows you know for activities to remain in the commercial corridor so in terms of um, the zoning district, uh, the, the Compella neighborhood has three zoning districts, which I already kind of described. You have the residential use, you have the commercial and industrial. And then in a commercial, you'll see like a little, you know, portion that's residential. And the main street corridor that we're going to be looking at today is under the commercial use in terms of zoning. And so what does that mean in terms of your current zoning that you have under the commercial corridor, you can actually have retail, professional service, offices, banks, childcare, churches, schools, education, dancing, music schools, eating, drinking establishments, bakery, catering, frozen food, automobile sales, carpentry shops, hardware, amusement recreation, theater, radio, TV stations. And then if you were to build a adult daycare or a car wash or a pet store, um, these are going to require a special use permit. So some of the things to think about is, you know, is there any uses in here that you want to remove? Is there any uses in here that you want as a right versus asking for a special permit? And then these uses are not currently in the zoning allowed, which are single family homes, multifamily, two or three families, healthcare, hospitals, nursing homes, mixed use, research labs, distillery, boutique manufacturing. But we know that some of this use exists. So this is where we're saying that your zoning is outdated. In terms of, um, in terms of 
uh, in the uses, we have 29% which are categorized as low residential density, meaning one or two stories, one story majority. We have 15% that's multifamily, 12% that's state religious, 12 that's retail, and then 10% each is manufactured and automobile. Office use is only 8%, and then mixed use is 4%. That's very low, right? So do we want to increase retail and um, mixed use? You know, that's something that we want to hear from you today. So in terms of the way that we divided the quarters, it's in three parts. I call this the north, the center, and the south. And in this northern portion, just to give you some context, um, again, we have 34% commercial, 28% municipal. But then when we get to the center, I would say, like, this is where it could be the main activity of the area. We then switch to 35% being residential, 22% commercial, and then 17% mixed use. And then when we get to the southern portion, it flips again to 26 municipal, 23 commercial, and 18% residential. I was going to, yep. if we go back to those three slides sure. and just pick out a couple of landmarks so that people could go back a few more. Okay. That's the first one, yeah. From okay. Nielsen Street to Chesna Street. So um, the old fire station, fire station number two is here. This is the uh, Lutheran Church. Uh, your Cape Cod is... Um, I think you're right here. So this is Cape Cod Cafe. Um, Mark. Just to know where, kind of where you are. This is the CVS. So this is or, from excuse me, the Walgreens. This is from Chestnut Street to Lyon Street. This is the Franklin Building. Uh, where, where would the old Kmart be? Oh, it's way, way yeah. far south. We're getting there. <laughs> Next, oh, I'm sorry, you got it. Next slide. And then this is the uh, CVS. This is Keith Park. Um, David Lynch's. <clears throat> and further down the street, we'll be we'll be looking at that as a separate part of this study. Right now, we're concentrating on this northern section, so we'll be back to that.